Hey, hey, and welcome back to my channel where we're going over every single spoiler for the upcoming Raging Echoes League. Today is day 15, and today is the last day of these spoilers. So let's get right into it. So Jagex today revealed all eight tiers of relics. So I'm going to start off by doing a quick overview of all the tiers and what we're going to get. And then I'm going to go into detail of each of the five new relics that were released, or maybe they're fan favorites that we had from the past. So I'm going to go through tier four, Equilibrium, tier five, Treasure Arbiter, Production Master and Slayer Master, and then Tier 6, Pocket Kingdom. Then we're going to do a quick analysis by each Relic tier and kind of what choices I think are best. And then last thing, I'm going to talk about my choices at the end. So, eight tiers of Relic. Like I mentioned in the past, you know, in my previous video, I thought there, you know, just because we don't have eight passives doesn't mean we won't necessarily have eight tiers of Relic. We saw eight tiers last league, and I felt like that was a good fit of like, hey, we get a lot more Relic and a lot more power. And now that they've split up the combat mastery from this, we actually get a lot more utility. So I feel like there's going to be a lot of enjoyable gameplay. Now, as far as I can tell, it looks like the tasks and the point requirements are a little bit steeper. And so I think Jagex is sticking to that theme that I mentioned in my previous analysis videos that they do want you to play longer with eight tiers of relics that means you know they want you to get further along in the game as well and so that's just overall it seems like Jagex really wanting us to kind of really enjoy the full eight weeks of leagues and so tier one these are our you know first off gathering uh relics next up we have the utility relics then we have our teleportation relics then we have like another tier of utility and kind of like just kind of training relics. Um, and then next up, we have another set of like utility relics. Specifically to point out, we have a comeback of the Slayer and the Clue relic. Then at tier six, we have Banker's Note and Total Recall. And then we have Grimoire, which we had seen. Now we know it's confirmed at a tier seven. Along with that, we have Overgrown fighting this brand new relic called Pocket Kingdom, which is really, really fun. And then last up, we have our combat relics that I talked about in a previous video. Definitely click the link below to see the playlist to see my full analysis of each of those combat relics. So... Equilibrium. As I predicted in one of my previous videos, I thought that Equilibrium would make a comeback. It's been kind of a staple through the last few leagues, and so I expected it to make a comeback. And this is coming back at uh, a benefit to all of your skills. So every time you gain XP, you gain XP equal to 10% of your total level. Additional XP given by this relic is not multiplied by the league XP multiplier. And so those passives that I talked about in the previous analysis, you know, you won't get those, but you will still get a whopping XP. Your total level, you know, gets pretty quickly to 1,000 and keeps going up all the way up to 2277, right? So that's a huge added XP bump to every single action you do, right? And your lowest skill will receive 20% total level XP instead of 10%. So pretty much you trained all your other skills, you go back for this last skill, maybe it's mining or something, and you're just mining some stars, you're still getting a whopping huge XP drop for every little stardust that you get, right? It's gonna be really phenomenal, it's really gonna allow you to level up all your skills. Um, one tip here is equilibrium will trigger per instance of individual XP provided, even if that is multiple times in a single tick. For example, we had a Production Master. We had the same kind of combo that they talked about last league, where Production Master will do your whole inventory at once. It will give you this XP for each of those. Now, it's not multiplied, but it is still a huge whopping XP drop. So, quick analysis here, like I said, completely identical to the last league. I think this is overall really good for those of you who are going for those points, who wanna go for max all skills and then 25 mil, and then maybe if there's a 50 mil task as well for all skills, it's pretty much a really good way to kind of round out all your skills. Um, let's say you're going a lot of choices that gives you a little bit of utility in all skills, but maybe not all the skills. Um, in that case, equilibrium is gonna be good at kind of getting you to that point threshold um, for all of these experience tasks. I don't think it's really the fit for most people. I don't think a lot of people are really going to do that grinding. Um, but for those of you who are doing this grinding, I think it's a really good choice at this tier. Um, again, I think that's probably going to be about maybe 10 to 20% of the player base at maximum. So next up, we have Treasure Arbiter. This is the tier five relics. Like I said, we have a comeback of the crew, Clue relics. So this will give you the effect of Clue Hunting. It's interesting because they kind of have these like names, Clue Hunting, um, but they don't actually have items. So I'm not sure why they have this kind of line in here. But anyways, 
Impling jars and creatures that drop clues will now have a 1 in 15% chance. This is really good for just doing, you know, killing monsters throughout Gilinor. You know, Hellhounds, I think, have like a 1 in 100-ish to drop a hard clue, and that now drops immediately to 1 in 15. Same thing with goblins for dropping beginner and easy clues, things like that, right? So immediately boost your clue chance. Remember, all clues are going to be stackable into these boxes, and so that's going to be phenomenal. In addition to that, clue geodes, nests, and clue bottles are found 10 times more often. So from while you're doing resource gathering, you're also going to stack up tons of clues. Remember, we do have a teleport relic called Clue Compass that's going to teleport you immediately to your clue next step. And so that's going to be really, really powerful into completing all these clues. And these are at separate tiers, so you're going to have compounded effects of Clue Compass in addition to Treasure Arbiter. All clues have the lowest number of steps possible. This is super fast. That means beginner clues have like one step, easy have two, and so on and so on. And in addition to that, emote, follow, and Charlie clue steps no longer have item requirements. I'm assuming this just means you just talk to the person and they're like, hey, good job, you found me. Here's your next step or here is your reward, right? For things like Charlie, who's just like a beginner clue and it's immediately only like one task. So you go to Charlie, you just turn it in. This is gonna be really, really fast at completing those clues. If you remember back to when we were talking about dodgy deals and thieving from hand members and stacking up tons of those easy clue caskets remember the chance goes up to one in 15 right and then you get tons of those and then now you don't even need the items because um, a lot of times some of these clues will be item dependent that you have to unlock now just every clue you get you should be able to do super duper fast right Okay, last up we have every clue casket will roll the max amount of rewards it can give. So for beginner, that's three, easy is four, medium is five, hard is six, elite is also six, and then last up master is seven, right? So you're gonna be getting this. I think whoever unlocks this, we're gonna be definitely seeing a lot of people with some third age items rolling around. Um, it's gonna be really cool, really powerful, but let's get into the analysis. Right, like I said, the most important thing is the no item requirement. That means it's really fast. Um, for example, if you were going to pick Kandarin, um, getting the fallow task and then going to get the item and stuff would have been really frustrating. Uh, but now, even that, you don't have to worry about getting the item. Remember, Sherlock is still gonna be um, like a, a skilling task or something like that. Um, but then again, who the hell is really picking Kandarin? Okay, like I said, this stacks with Clue Compass. So you get Clue Compass at tier three, and then you get this at tier five, and you're absolutely just blasting clues. Unreal amount of clues. Now, because of the speed of which this relic and the Clue Compass kind of stacks on top of each other, they did say during the live stream that they are gonna nerf the amount of clue tasks and completion. Right? If you remember me talking in my last video when we were talking about like the dodgy deal combo with like getting easy clues and completing them for points, I think that's going to be kind of nerfed here. We actually don't know how many, whether it's going to be just less points for those completion rates or if it's just a less number of tasks. Remember, if you need points to kind of unlock your relics, but you need tasks to unlock your regions, right? So if they nerf the number of tasks, that means there's less things you can complete to get unlocks your region. And if they nerf the number of points, that's also going to affect your dragon trophy, but also it's going to affect your ability to unlock the next tier of, uh, of relics, right? That said, I think it's still going to be super powerful with clue compass and this, it's going to be a whopping combo. If you love doing clues, definitely go for this. I think it's going to be super, super fun. Next up is Production Master, which is another tier five relic. We've seen this in the past that pretty much completes your entire inventory of processing activity, right? So when doing the following production activities, all items are processed at once. This includes smelting ores, smithing bars, and making cannonballs, fletching logs, stringing bows, making arrow shafts, and cutting bolt tips, making headless arrows, regular arrows, bolts, and darts, capped at the 10x. So when you were doing like, you know, fletching for these headless arrows and arrows and bolts and darts, you would do like up to 10 at a time. And so that's what they're sticking to. Otherwise, you would have stacks of like headless arrow and feathers and you could do like 100,000 at once. That would obviously be very busted. Um, but yeah, so 10 times the regular amount, which is really nice. Uh, cleaning herbs and making potions, which does not have a stackable secondary ingredient, which is really nice, right? So that's not your amylase crystals because you could also do like a full 27 of those at a time, but everything else you would do pretty quickly. Uh, cooking food, making pies or pizzas, and making jugs of wine. Again, remember, this is kind of like inventory limited where you can only make like 14 jugs of wine anyways because you have 14 grapes and 14 jugs, uh, but still pretty cool. And lastly, we have crafting leather, uncut gems, glass blowing, jewelry, pottery, battle staves, and splitting flax or wool, right? Cool, I can really fast finish, you know, sheep shearer as a quest. 
So let's get into the analysis. So this one, like I said, is the same thing from last league, except we got a huge buff, which is adding cooking and fletching. So this is really nice if you're worried about your processing skills and just kind of getting them done. If you're thinking about using reloaded that we got spoiled and picking another one of those resource gathering relics, well, let's pause for a second, okay? So each of those gathering relic tools, like the mining one will give you a smithing effect, right? The fishing one will give you a cooking effect and cook doesn't fail and then lastly we have the the fire making and wood cutting one the wood cutting one will give you a fire making or a fletching effect right the fact that those all have like a passive effect that affects another skill that is one of these production prodigy and, and mastery skills um i'm thinking like there's a little bit of anti-synergy there i think the best one is is if you were to go for the wood cutting one then you still get all the effects listed here because there's no kind of benefit to fire making there is the added wood connect uh, effect of uh fletching into arrow shafts but that one i think is just so minor because arrow shafts don't give a lot of experience and you also need to train fire making anyways and if you were going that relic you probably didn't have access to like winter taught in your region and that's probably why one of the reasons you were going that relic to begin with and so that said, I think it's probably going to have like a good synergy. So you can really round out your character by going, you know, the lumberjacking relic in addition to this production master one. That said, I think this is really for the people who really need to fix your skills based off of region. Again, really good choice, really powerful choice, really fast at leveling and XP, but just it's going to be region dependent based off of what activities you have. All right, last up, we have Slayer Master at Tier 5. Again, we've seen a Slayer Relic in the past. I was kind of hoping for a Slayer Relic this time. They did boost those bigger and badder things already as a passive effect for everyone, but there is some really cool power here. So when you pick Slayer Master, you gain the following benefits to Slayer. Always on task for all eligible Slayer monsters. So pretty much any monster that you could ever get a task for, everything from you know blue dragons to Jad and so on, all of those always count as being a Slayer monster, right? Um, in addition to that, you unlock all Slayer task perks for free. So all those benef benefits of like smashing gargoyles, spraying mushrooms, and so on, all those are unlocked automatically. In addition to that, you get all the Slayer point items. So rune pouch, herb sack, and looting bags are free. So that's really nice. You don't have to like get the points for those things. Um, and lastly, skip and block tasks are free. So what this means overall is pretty much every single thing you would ever need Slayer points for is free. So you never actually need to go and get a task because all monsters are just always on task for you. In addition to this, you gain 1,000 to 15,000 bonus Slayer XP for the first time you kill the hundredth of each unique Slayer monster. And this is scaled by the Slayer monster requirement, right? Um, and then the XP stated is before multipliers. So this is kind of interesting where like you could go and kill like 99 blue dragons and then save your last hundredth dragon for like a, you know, a, a, when you get to the max 32x XP multi or the 16x multiplier. And so that could be really powerful. I don't know how much you really want to micromanage, like get to 99 kills and then just go on to the next monster. I don't think it's going to be worth that much, but this is nice to like kind of have that added bonus uh, later on in the game. So what's really good about this one is you don't have to task hunt anymore. You can pretty much just kill whatever monster you want. Let's say you need some herbs and you can kill Turots or Karasks. You can go kill them, right, for, for the resources you want. Also, we do have a lot of these Slayer bosses like Grotesque Guardians and Cerberus and Thermi, and you can just immediately go kill the boss without ever needing to like fish through the tasks, right? You don't need to cancel and block and skip until you find that task. You can just go kill whatever monster you want. And because we have boss, that includes things like Barrows. So pretty much for those of you going Mauritania, as soon as you get into Barrows and you have this tier five relic, every single Barrows brother is also gonna give you Slayer XP. That's absolutely phenomenal. Now, there's another huge perk for Aboratina Pickers because we have access to the Slayer Helm. This is the best in slot for a lot of content, right? And it was confirmed on stream that this also works for Echo Bosses. So the Slayer Helm is gonna give you, I think like 16% and 15% once you imbue it for range and magic um, against these monsters for accuracy and damage. All of your Echo Bosses that are these, like Grotesque Guardians, Cerberus, Thermi, all of them will get that bonus and they'll have massive you know, Slayer XP drops at the end, right? It's also confirmed that this does work for Jad and Zuck, and I think on the stream they said it'll work for one Zuck KC, right? So your first Zuck kill, especially that that is a requirement for those combat masteries that you have to get, will get that benefit. You will get the added Slayer accuracy and damage. 
absolutely phenomenal. I'm super excited about the power level of the Slayer Helm. That does mean we will all need to go to Soul Wars to get the imbue. So tomorrow on Leagues, or Wednesday or Thursday, I'm not sure which day, but I will see you all at Soul Wars. Just leave a comment below and smash the like so I know you'll be there uh, at Soul Wars with me. All right, so last up, we have even good for non mauritania pickers. Remember, we all have Tormented Demons. Greater Demons are a Slayer task. Tormented Demons are buffed Slayer XP. They're like a 1,000 XP drop per Tormented Demon, which means that take your whatever XP multiplier, at this is we're at tier five, so at this you're already getting like 8X or 12X, I forgot the exact passive, but yeah, add that, multiply that, just killing Tormented Demons for those weapons, those synapses, as well as the Burning Claws, you're gonna get massive XP and really good items, right? If you're picking Asgarnia, all the God of Wars generals, all of them are going to be on task for you, right? Even the avian seas as well, all of the, the minions will also be on task for all of you, right? So that's a ton of experience. All the wildy bosses, the DT2 bosses, the list goes on. Like, just go to the wiki and just look up the list. It's massive, right? I think this is absolutely phenomenal. I can actually see myself getting like 25 mil or 50 mil Slayer XP this league easily, actually, with this. Um, if you can't tell, I'm really hyped about this. I'm picking Mauritania. This is definitely going to be my pick in this tier. All right, tier six. We have this brand new relic called Pocket Kingdom, okay? So in this, you will get an item called Pocket Kingdom. So remember, you have to be in the bank when you unlock this relic, so you get the item. This item allows full access to managing miscellaneous feature from anywhere. So I'm guessing this is gonna have the same menu as the as the miscellaneous guy, who's gonna be like collect resources or manage kingdom, right? Workers will work for 50% less coin. I forget the exact burn rate. If you remember it or you look it up in the wiki, you can put it below. I don't think it's that much, right? But it is a, it's a substantial amount of gold, but it is gonna burn every hour. I'll explain that in a second with clarifications. Um, you always have max appeal, so there's no like farming to get appeal, right? And you produce twice as many resources. Um, and resources accrue every hour instead of every day. Pretty much every resource you would gather from like one day of time passing, you get that at every hour. So that's 24X, and then that is multiplied um, to twice as many resources. So it's actually 48X to what you would get in a single day of managing miscellaneous. Now, just remember, this is still managing miscellaneous like the typical way. So you're not gonna be able to unlock full bars in all of the categories. You will need to configure your categories. So you're probably gonna max out your herbs and then probably you know rotate around from like, maybe you need coal for, for smithing or whatever you might do with some mining. Uh, you'll probably need some logs uh, for construction so you can get teaks and mahoganies. Um, and then you'll also maybe want some logs for fletching and maybe some nests and, and seeds. So then you might have like the maple logs as well. Um, maybe if you're low on food, you might do the fish or you wanna train some cooking experience. You can get raw or cooked fish, whatever that is. Um, overall, really, really cool, really, really powerful. Let's get into some more analysis. So during the live stream, we did have some clarifications, just the math that I mentioned, 100% appeal, and the one hour equals 24X, and then it gets doubled to 48X. So 48 times resources, really, really good. Uh, in Discord, we got some clarifications as well, that it does not require you to unlock Fremenic, which you would normally need to have access to miscellaneous. In addition to that, Pocket Kingdom will take maintenance gold every hour. So this is why Pocket Kingdom will need a bunch of money. And remember, this is at a different tier than Golden God. Golden God, I believe, is at tier four. And so you pick that, you start generating tons of money. By the time you roll around here to tier six, you're gonna have tons of money to just funnel into your pocket kingdom and just start printing herbs, coal, maple logs, teak logs, mahogany logs, fish, seeds, bird nests, whatever it is. It's it's absolutely phenomenal. I think this is a great way to get those resources, right? Um, if you're you know gonna do this, I think this is a great option to kind of trade off from maybe the herb relics or the overgrown relics as well. Um, overall, I think this is really phenomenal. If you don't have access to a lot of resources, this relic can really fix and round out your, your resource needs. Okay, so let's look at all the relics for all the tiers. I'll give you my quick kind of analysis at every tier. If you want the in-depth breakdown, definitely check out my playlist that I've linked below, and you can see the breakdown as they were spoiled and my analysis in-depth for each one. 
So tier one, we have Power Miner, Lumberjack, and Animal Wrangler. Now just note the screenshot from the live stream, the Lumberjack and Animal Wrangler icons have been mixed, but we'll just talk about them individually by their name. So Power Miner overall is gonna be really nice for those of you who need to fix your mining and smithing. I think that's a really good choice. Lumberjack, I'm a little bit less excited about because we have had added forestry into the game and forestry does make training uh, wood cutting really fast. In addition to that, we have campfires, which adds AFK fire making training. And then if you don't want to do that, fire making is already just a really fast skill. You'll get logs from various activities. And so I'm not too worried about lumberjacking. And personally, I'm not really trying to use it to fix my choices. I think that'll just be a skill I kind of AFK when I need to 99 it if I choose to do so. And last up, we have Animal Wrangler. This is great. For those of you who have Hunter in your regions or really good access to Chins or the Hunter Guild in Farlamore, Animal Wrangler is great. It's going to have a huge added benefit to, to those Hunter tasks. Uh, but if not, don't worry. You still have the added benefit to Fishing that becomes immediately AFK uh, as well as Cooking as a really passive skill. You'll also bank a bunch of the fish uh, that you don't cook because it's only 50%. So that's pretty nice. Uh, but remember, we have Karambons right off the back. And so you'll be able to fish that AFK and get a really easy 99 uh, to start off. All right, tier two, we have Corner Cutter, Friendly Forager, and Dodgy Deals. To me, Dodgy Deals is the hands-down winner here. There is a thing that if you haven't listened to the Discord or the Reddit chatter, um, there is a way to train agility using points from an underwater thieving activity from a chest in Fossil Island that every single person has access to. And so going Dodgy Deals makes that thieving activity super fast and successful. And what that allows you to do is train agility with the rewards from there. Now, if you have Asgarnia, you have also have access to the flippers, I'm going as Garnia. So those flippers will allow me to train it even faster. I think the XP rates are absurd, like 2 million agility XP per hour or something uh, is what I heard, and maybe 5 million with, with flippers. And so dodgy deals to me is a hands-on winner for my regions. Um, but if not, Friendly Forger is also looking really juicy. Um, remember, getting secondaries can be painful, doing herb runs can be painful. And so just using Friendly Forager to get a lot of passive herbs from doing your other resource gathering skills is nice. And then you save 90% of those secondaries or 100% if you have Varlamore and you do Mixology. That's just absolutely phenomenal. So I think for me, it's Dodgy Deals, Friendly Forager, and lastly, Corner Cutter. To me, the 10K gold and the other added benefits are just not that you know, noteworthy. All right, next up, we have three tiers for Teleport Relics, Clue Compass, Bank Heist, and Fairy's Flight. We saw on the live stream today that the mod just said, pick Clue Compass and move on. That's all I'm gonna say there. Clue Compass and move on. All right, tier four, we have Golden God, Reloaded, and Equilibrium. We just saw Equilibrium today, but that's been a kind of a, a standard staple for leagues for the past two leagues. Um, to me, I think Equilibrium's really good for if you're gonna max, and I'm not planning on like going for like the 25 mil and 50 mil XP tasks in all skills. So that's a clear hard pass. I am considering potentially Reloaded. I think Reloaded is really powerful, especially at the tier two relic. If you wanna see my analysis on Reloaded, definitely check out the previous video. And then Golden God, this is infinite money, infinite prayer, infinite magic XP, super, super nice. Um, all right, next up in the tier five, we have just talked about these relics, the clue one, the production skill, and the slayer one. To me, in my opinion, I think the slayer one and clue one are the most fun. I think you can fix production master with, you know, just by training those skills at really high XP rates, depending on your activities. That said, if you really hate doing those activities, uh, production master is probably the pick and you'll just have to grind out, you know, clues and, and slayer tasks as you normally would. Um, to me, I think slayer master is the clear winner um, just because we do have clue compass. Once you get those items and you build those stash tabs, Clue Compass kind of solves the one of the huge benefits of the Treasure Arbiter. Plus, we're not picking Kandarin, and so we're not going to have to worry about those follow steps anyways. Um, so again, I'm, that's where I'm leaning. That's what I'm thinking is good. All right, last up uh, on Tier 5, we have Total Recall and Banker's Note. For me, this is a toss-up. If you're a skilled player and you can successfully do monsters and raids and everything that you plan on doing without the need of too much additional resources, I think it's Total Recall. If you're a learner like me doing brand new content, like you know, Theater Blood is new for me, I'm definitely going Banker's Note. I think to me that's overall winner. If you're not too sure, I'm pretty sure you probably want to pick Banker's Note. Total Recall has really good utility for farming a boss. So if you're going to go for pets and repeated kills, I think Total Recall is really nice because it kind of resets you outside the instance and you can just kind of keep spamming a boss. But other than that, I think Banker's Note is definitely the, the, the overall play here. 
All right, at tier seven, we have the brand new Pocket Kingdom going up against Grimoire and Overgrown. This is a pretty difficult tier. I think Pocket Kingdom is gonna fix you a lot of resources and the same thing with Overgrown, right? And so I think what you need to consider is what resources are you looking for more? Does Overgrown help you fix just, you know, you have a way to kind of maintain seeds from thieving using dodgy deals from master pickpocketers and you just want a way to plant them and you kind of hate doing those daily farming runs or do you just not even want to worry about it and just get all those resources for free? Free, right? Um, and so Pocket Kingdom might be a good pick for you. If you don't care about resources overall, Grimoire might be the pick because you're just going to have those added prayers. Like the, the mod said in the stream, it's not that much of a damage boost over time, but I still think it's not something to shy away from. Also, if you don't have access to the alternate prayer books, um, spell books like uh, Ancients, and you don't have access to Ancient spells, that might be a good way to get access to them because you're not going desert. And so I think Grimoire has a little, you know, overall really good, like, PVM utility, whereas Pocket Kingdom and Overgrown are just relics to kind of support your resource gathering and, and supply utility. So that's really up to you based off of your regions and where you think you're, you're going to need the support the most. All right, last up, we have the Combat Relic Specialist. This one, I think, is really specific to what are the spec items in your region. Sure, we all have access to Burning Claws, but I don't think that's worth it enough to just go Specialist. If you're going as Garnia, that's pretty much where some of the best spec weapons are between the Dog Sword and the Xerite Crossbow. And so I think if you're going as Garnia, that's the only time you're really considering Specialist. Uh, maybe if you're going the Wildy and you're going for the Thunder Copash, that's another reason I would consider Specialist. I think all other reasons are kind of ignoring the Specialist as an option. Uh, Next up, we have Guardian. This is a really good utility. It's going to make all of your kills, all of your raids, uh, even Gauntlet faster. And all of those Echo Bosses that we have to kill this, re this league are, are going to be a lot quicker as well. Last up, we have Last Stand. This is, to me, the, the support relic for all the beginners and learners. In addition to, I think there's some really cool damage combos that you can do with uh, Darox or range in general, just dishing up massive amounts of damage during those 16 ticks of invulnerability, right? Um, so I'm definitely leaning towards Last Stand. If any of you are like me and you're planning on learning new content, Last Stand, I think, is probably the best choice. I did go Guardian last time, and it did make like raids and content faster. But that said, I don't think it was enough to kind of correct my mistakes and that let me to die. All right, so I've kind of talked about all of my choices. I'm going as Garnia, Mauritania, Fremenic. I might change up as Garnia and Mauritania depending on how the stacks of the, the tasks and the points line up because if I really want to be able to get Mauritania and also have the Slayer going so I can start doing Barrows and things like that. Um, but I just need to see what that task list, what the points look like, what the tiers look like. Once that's sorted out, I'm definitely gonna make my decision. But here I am, I'm choosing Animal Wrangler. Don't be confused by the icon, I'm going by the, the text. So Animal Wrangler first. There's maybe a chance to go Power Miner. Number two, Dodgy Deals for sure, hands down. Number three, Clue Compass, definitely for sure. Uh, number four is kind of a toss up. I'm definitely leaning towards Golden God, but in my regions with Fremenic and Vorkath, I do have Prayer Fixed. Magic is just kind of free, like you can just kind of train magic passively. Um, I have access to Lunars, so I can do Plank Make, things like that I'm gonna be able to do. And so Golden God, it's still TBD for me. Uh, plus I'll access to have some money from dodgy deals, and so I, I just really don't know yet. Um, but that said, I might choose Reloaded to go back to picking Friendly Forager. Remember, the secondary save to me is really the big part of Friendly Forager, that's the win. I do have access to Herb and Herb Seeds, and so you know I just have to do the farm runs and the Herb runs, but that's still TBD. All right, at tier five, I'm going Mauritania. Slayer Master, like I said, is the hands down winner at tier five for me. Um, also, I think kind of the hands down overall winner for the PVM content and the Echo Bosses that we have this time around, right? If we were like a clue league, then sure, I'd think the Treasure Arbor would be better, but we are fighting bosses and PVM and Slayer Master is all about that. Next up, I'm definitely going Banker's Note. Like I said, I'm learning Theater of Blood this time around. I definitely need the Banker's Note to give me endless supply of resources. So that's my pick there. Uh, next up, we have Pocket Kingdom, Grimoire, and Overgrown. Now, I'm not sure how I need to fix my resources here, and so I'm definitely leaning towards the Grimoire overall just because do I really need to fix my resources or can I just do some herb runs and, and sort it out, right? Um, that said, I am potentially considering overgrown because I do have access to miscellanea and I do have access to a lot of resources in general. Plus, I'm going to be training those resource gathering skills anyways, and so I'm going to have access to those resources. Um, and so overgrown kind of just because I have access to a lot of seeds from dodgy deals 
and Slayer monsters, um, just planting them and getting that growing constantly will be a nice influx of secondaries and uh, herbs as well. And so, especially with using Banker's Note, if I want a lot of you know potions to note up to bring with me, um, I will need a lot of potions and therefore Overgrown really kind of fixes that, right? Now, of course, if I pick Friendly Forager, I'm definitely not picking Overgrown. And so I'm still kind of deciding between these. Uh, let me know what you think is better, what I should go with. Uh, and then last up, like I mentioned, is Last Stand. I'm definitely learning. I'm definitely gonna be making mistakes. So Last Stand is gonna save me there. In addition to that, I'm really excited about the Darok and uh, the gloves combo and how much damage I can dish out with Last Stand. Hopefully, maybe I can like echo and like one shot Vorkath. That would be really, really cool. Alrighty, that's all I got. Thank you so much for watching and following me in this spoiler series. I'm definitely going to try to do some kind of daily progress videos on the channel. Like I said, I'm just doing this for fun, but if you like my content, definitely subscribe. If you found this video helpful, definitely smash the like button. And anything else you want to talk about or share, definitely leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.